Hey there, uh, I'm going to describe the pi space notation um, in just in terms of the notation, not the math so much. Uh, just so if anyone's interested in the meaning of the diagrams, um, so therefore that's what the purpose of the lecture is. So again, we start with uh, the, uh, the building block of the theory, which is what's called a pi shell. It can represent either a single atom or a group of atoms um, which make up a larger sphere and that's called a pie shell. Um, the next concept is, uh, is that same diagram drawn except there is the idea in relativity that you have different observers and in in pi space the way that's defined is there's a local frame of reference there is an observer who typically is in a stationary frame of reference relative to a moving object and we take two examples here one is a larger uh, L4 which is a, lo a local frame of reference so you have a train that moves and then you have someone standing on the platform the high-speed train moves that uh, therefore it's uh, it's pie shells are smaller so that would be uh, location two and then you've the um, the person who's on the platform is L, uh, local frame of reference one. So, so therefore you can have two different um, local frames of reference. And so therefore the 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 observer uh, pie shell is tending to be that of the observer. So that the any measurements are made from that observer's viewpoint. Uh, in reality, when a train moves uh, at a high speed on the Earth, the actual degree of shrinkage is is minuscule. Um, uh, but this is just for illustrative purposes. Uh, but the the people on the trains' pie shells are actually smaller, but to a very small extent, and that if that is the reason for time dilation and distance dilation. But this these examples here would be kind of relativistic speeds in this example. Uh, we move on to the next concept, which is um, velocity, which is the Newtonian idea, and it's well established and we all know it very well. How do we relate velocity to pi space? Uh, well, the way it works is you have a observer uh, sphere here, or atom, and a pi shell, and then it shrinks by a certain amount, and therefore it's a subtraction of area of that, um, of that observer pi shell. Uh, velocity actually maps to uh, the diameter line so although area is lost on, on the observer pie shell the actual velocity is a diameter line calculation in the example we show here the pink one is relative velocity 0.25 C because it's one quarter of the diameter of the um, the observer pie shell and 0.5 which is the yellow one is is half the diameter of the observer atom uh, so it's tricky to draw that um, accurately uh, if you were in school, so we come up with a better notation, uh, which is what's called the diameter line notation. And in this example here, uh, you see uh, 0 0.25 of the speed of light. This pie shell is moving at 0 0.25 of the speed of light. It could be a planet, or it could be a single atom, or it could be a group of atoms but it, it uh, that make up a sphere. Typically, it would be an atom on, say, a spaceship or an object moving at 0 0.25 of the speed of light. Uh, the diameter line uh, represents the area loss. So the more complete diagram would show would show the uh, the blue part, but that's just tricky to draw. So for the purposes of uh, for the notation, it's 0 0.25 of the speed of light. Now, the idea is that the diameter line is on the inside which means it's an area loss relative to the observer and it's a quarter of the speed of light. Now, uh, the, the, the vector component means it's moving this way. It's moving this way. So that's the vector component. So what you have is an object, which is this sphere, uh, a pie shell, moving in this direction at 0 0.25 of the speed of light. That's, the, that's what that diagram means. Uh, we move on to the idea of... Um, of uh, pie shells shrinking and getting larger. So when something when something moves, um, it gets uh, smaller. So this example is moving upwards at the quarter of the speed of light. Um, and in this one here, we have something moving downwards uh, at, zero, at the quarter of the speed of light. 
and then we have the, the the newer idea which is something moving upwards and getting larger so if we want to describe something getting larger if we want to get, see an observer uh, atom getting larger this is how we draw it so this will get larger by a quarter of the speed of light right uh, relative to the uh, relative to the uh, observer now you might say well when does that happen so basically uh, that large an amount would be very unusual but it, it does happen in the theory under gravity if you are on the ground and you throw an object uh, upwards uh, what happens is <clears throat> what happens is that the atom gets larger so the way gravity works in pi space is really simple um, at the at the center of the planet are the smallest pi shells or atoms and as you move out and up they get larger so this is how we describe something getting larger uh, you can uh, you can combine you can combine the diagrams you can have something going down uh, at a speed and getting faster and then you can have um, something going up and you can uh, you can add them up uh, so a good example of, of this is uh, is basically the idea of um, throwing an object up under gravity. You have to throw the object under gravity. Uh, uh, the throwing motion compresses the object and makes it smaller. But what happens is as it moves up under gravity, it gets larger, the, the atoms get larger uh, to the point where they equalize. And that's the, the idea there is that the kinetic energy, which is the shrinking part is equal to the potential energy, which is the getting larger part, they equalize and then it comes back down. Uh, and, it's not just about small objects. You can represent very, very large um, objects in uh, in pi space. Uh, for example, you can represent um, an entire an entire planet uh, in pi space. Uh, so basically, uh, you can say that that a planet is a sphere, and that there's a center of gravity, and that there's two spheres uh, in this diagram on either side of the gravity field for the purpose of illustration and uh, the idea would be that if you are on the ground and you go all the way to the edge of the planet you have a certain amount of area gain which is what's called the potential and then if you drop down to the earth from the surface you you, inc you get kinetic energy which is the area loss on your sphere so it's really simple and um, I'll leave it at that but that's the basic idea so you could draw a, a pie shell here for the gravity field. The, the the planet itself isn't the gravity field. It's the uh, gravity field is represented by two spheres here and here, uh, which have a certain degree of compression uh, due to gravity. So it's really straightforward. Um, I've also ad adopted the notation for for the electromagnetic uh, work, uh, which I might do in a different lecture. Uh, so that's it. If you're curious about the notation, that's how it works. Spheres getting bigger and getting smaller, moving in a particular direction uh, with a certain degree of compression, and it works from there. Thanks very much.